Are you a fan of the Dragon Ball Super card game? If so, check out QueenCityGaming.com for sealed products, singles, and more. Just use promo code MAFUBAJAR-10 to save 10% off your order every time. Welcome back to MAFUBAJAR. We've been seeing away for another awesome deck profile. And today, guys, I'm going to be presenting to you my Harutagon Storm deck. Now, I personally thought this deck would not be seeing much play after the flute got hit to one. But it's, to my surprise, it is still a very consistent deck. Not as consistent as it was. You can't get the turn two kill as consistently. But more than half the time, you can still defeat your opponent by turn two with this deck. And it's a very scary deck and definitely one to watch out for if you will be attending any of the regionals coming up. So let's go ahead and take a look at the leader. And there is also a jumbo size of this if you guys prefer to use that as well. It comes from the booster boxes of Colossal Warfare, and this was one of the leaders. That got a jumbo card. Personally, I don't like the jumbo cards, but that's just me. So the auto is, when this card attacks a leader card, you choose one battle card from hand, place it in the drop, and draw two cards. What's really cool about this is that it's just any battle card. It doesn't have to be anything specific. So that right there has a lot of potential. And he awakens that four energy by untapping two. And his awakened side, the only skill he has is when he attacks a draw card, also, if you have four energy, your opponent has to choose a card from their hand and place it on top of their deck. But honestly, this won't come up too often. It'll come up a little bit more often. Now that we have flute just at one and we can't do the turn two kill every game. But so you're gonna be killing your opponent by turn two a lot. So a lot of the time that second party auto won't come up, but it's something neat to have. Absolutely. And let's go ahead and take a look at the deck itself. Of course, I am still going to be running one Legendary Flutes, just because it's too amazing not to. So what this does is if your leader card's blue, you either pick one of yours or one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost of three or less, return to the hand, and if it was your battle card, you get to draw a card. So you definitely use this with all your swap cards like Bardock, Goten. That's the main targets for this. But this also is really good against annoying blockers like Yajirobe, Legic, all that stuff. And next up here is going to be our super combo cards. It's going to be four copies of Hoy, Emissary of Flame. And it's a, this is a really neat super combo. So if your leader card is a Phantom Demon, so basically Herutagon, you discard a card from your hand and you get to draw two cards. So on top of the resources you're already going to be getting with all the swap engine, you have this super combo as well. So that's really, really amazing. Just all the pluses and adds you get with this deck. It's just too incredible. Too incredible. Next up here for our Waking the Dragon kind of series of cards, we have four copies of Hidden Darkness Minosha. Now this is basically just a searcher card. Is when this card is placed from your hand into the drop area, if your leader card is a Phantom Demon, you get to search your deck for Harutagon to wander and add it to your hand. So pretty much, you attack with a Harutagon, Use the skill to pitch a card, pitch the Minosha, draw two, and then you use the Minosha skill to search for this. So it's as if you never had to pitch a card and you just drew two cards out of nothing. And same thing with the with the Hoy as well. It's as if you never had to pitch to draw two. And you're thinning out your deck a little more, so that's really, really awesome right there. And also, since we need a search target, it's gonna be four copies of Harutagon the Wanderer. This is pretty much just a search target for an Minosha just to thin out the deck, and it's either combo fodder or it's energy fodder. This doesn't really have any particular use other than those two things, but it gets still, it's still nice to just have a guaranteed energy in your hand or a guaranteed combo card if you need to combo out of a situation or just do a little bit of an extra push for game. And that does it for the Herutagon specific cards. Now let's get into what makes this deck amazing, really. And that's going to be the yellow cards in this deck. Starting off, of course, here with three Planet Vegeta. You search your deck for any sand that's a four drop or lower. And that it's your hand. And also, at the end of your turn, any great apes that are in rest mode get switched into active mode. Which we do run a small great ape engine in here. So that's going to definitely come in handy. Alright. Next up here, we have four copies of Successor of Hope. You get to search up to one Goku's Lineage card with an energy cost of five or less and it has to have swap and add it to your hand. And there's only really one target we run for this, but it's the best target to run, really. It's gonna be four copies of Bardock the Progenitor or Progenitor, however you pronounce it. I'm not the best with these kind of names, guys, so bear with me on that. 
So this is pretty much one of the most busted cards in this deck. So it's a one drop of yellow. Auto is when you play this card, choose a card in your life, add it to your hand, that's mandatory, not optional. So if you're coming off and get on your last two lives, be careful how you play with this card. And he has a swap too, what that means is that when energy, you swap this with a Goku's lineage card with two or less costs and add this back to the hand. And your target for that, 90% of the time, is going to be Scrambling Assault Goten, another insanely busted card in this deck. So his auto is when this card attacks, you look at the top three cards from the top of your deck, choose any card among them, and you place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck. So this looks at three cards against anyone you want, basically. And you're only paying one energy to play because you're just using, this is what you're swapping into with the Bardock. And this particular swap does not cost you anything. So that's really, really incredible. Just blah, mind blowing how they made a Goten so good. And also another target we have for Bardock swap. I don't, it's not one to use as often, but it can definitely come in handy. Or it's going to be the three copies of Caring Mother Videl. And what she does is that you switch this card and rest with a draw card, and then choose up to one of your battle cards, and it gains 5,000 for the duration of the turn. So let's say you have a, already have a Goten out, and you swap with the Bardock into the Videl. And especially if your opponent's already awakened too, this can really come in handy. So you would swap this in rest mode, have the Goten gain 15, and draw a card, not gain 15. He'll be at 15, the perfect number to start hitting your opponent's awakened leader, and all that awesome stuff. So yeah, definitely a really good card. Not all Storm decks run this, but I noticed that a good amount do. It's either they either run this or they run the Gohan, which is nothing wrong with the Gohan, because it's nice to have a blocker, but I prefer to Fidel just to have more draw options. All right, that does it for the Goku's lineage archetype here. So let's go ahead into the more blue stuff here. And of course, we gotta have four copies of Unyielding Spirit Trucks. If you have a blue leader, you're running this Trunks. There's no question about it. It's too good. During your turn, when you combo with it, if your leader is blue, you untap one of your energy. So, this is how you can just keep going on endlessly. By just paying an energy, attacking with the Bardock, comboing with the Trunks to restand that energy, swap it to the Goten, attack with a Goten to get your stuff. Play the flute if you happen to pick up the Go 10 to draw a card. And since your energy is already restanded because of the trunks, play the Bardock again, attack again, and then swap again to another Go 10 you have in hand. And just it just goes on and on and on. It's honestly disgusting. Especially if you get the perfect hand, you can you literally do an endless loop until your opponent's life is at zero. All right, and for a little bit of a costier card, in this deck it's a bit, little bit costy, is three, four copies of Sneak Attack Vegeta. I almost said four cost. I just look at it because it's a three drop and run four of it. So it has Barrier, which is pretty cool. It's a target for a plan Vegeta to search, also cool. And as odd always, when this card attacks a leader card, your opponent chooses one card from their hand and places it on top of their deck. So that's really, really awesome. And the fact that you're also dealing life damage to your opponent as well. Phantom Flame Cannon also does this. It's a one drop extra battle card that if you're attacking with Harutagon or if just Harutagon's your leader, that your opponent has to take one of the cards to place on their top of their deck. That card's completely fine too. I have no issues with Phantom Flame Cannon. It's just, I would also rather be dealing damage to my opponent's life as well. So, Sneak Attack Vegeta, Phantom Flame Cannon, or both. Either of those are completely fine. Just make sure you're running at least four copies of one of those. Just my little words of advice to you guys. And for that mini ape engine I told you about, we're going to be running three copies of Bardock Will of Iron. He's a double strike blocker, which is amazing. And as I was doing your turn, at the end of the battle phase, after you combo with this card, choose up to one of your Bardocks and evolve it into this card. So... Pretty much, we're only tapping, we're only paying one energy to involve this one drop Bardock into this four drop double striker with blocker. And what's really amazing is that if you have Bardock out and you attack with something else that you come with this, just evolve it into active mode, you already have a double striker out that you only paid one energy for. So this is really, really good. And if you have playing Vegeta out, he, they all go back to active mode at the end of your turn. So definitely could come in clutch big time. 
And last but not least, just gonna show you guys some of the extra cards I run here. Well, along with the plan of a G I showed you before. Got four copies of Sensu Bean, of course, just two amazing not to run. Helps you restand the energy when you don't have the trunks in hand. You wanna have as many ways to restand your energy as possible. Cause that's how you keep the endless loop going. That's how you keep the storm going. And I just realized why they call it storm. Good job, Noel. You're learning stuff today. <laughs> And last but not least, four copies of what is probably the most amazing to get in the game right now, which is Flying Nimbus. So you, it's a one drop of yellow, you negate, and then you place a yellow card from your hand in the drop area, and if you do your opponent's battle cards, can only attack one more time this turn. So pretty much, this is why that so many decks are trying to fit in some yellow, just so they can run Nimbus, because this is like the only way to really stop any Storm deck is to just play a Nimbus so they can't constantly attack you, especially if you're in the mirror match too. Because if you're playing this deck, big tournament, I can guarantee you guys, you're definitely going to see some mirror matches. So Nimbus is too amazing. This is like probably the only time I'm going to run Nimbus over Whis. Just because it's too incredible. And uh, that does it really for the Harutagon deck, but I just want to show you guys quickly that like, if you don't want to do Harutagon and you want to play tr the Trunk Storm deck, it's almost exactly the same thing. Except other than Hoy, you will play either Piccolo or Kibito Kai. You, there's four copies of each of these. At least take four of one of these would be my, for sure. And the other four can be whatever you want. Other than that, the Trunks and Harutagon Storm decks are basically identical. So just pick your leader and just change all your super combos. And with the Minosha and the bottom like the Harutagon. And you've got Trunk Storm, pretty much. So, yeah. <laughs> Two amazing decks built very similarly. So if you guys enjoyed this deck profile, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And with that, guys, I hope you all have a fantastic day, and you have been released.